at first I was like wondering why people thought I was like a drug dealer for some reason. But then I realized the outfit that I'm wearing. And then it kind of started to make sense. I was going to wake up at 8 a.m. because it was recommended to go to Sintra as early as possible in order to avoid the crowd of tourists that would be going to Peña Palace. Change of plans. I woke up at 12 p.m. instead. It is now almost 1 p.m. and now I'm gonna head out. To be fair, I slept at 4 a.m. last night, so I really needed the sleep. I need to prioritize sleep more often, and I also need to sleep early more often, too. This is just an ever-increasing list of things that I gotta work on. So I'm gonna bring a few books with me to try to see if I can get any nice bookstagram pictures. The Peña Palace has a lot of bright orange and red colors, so I am bringing the astonishing color of After to try to match with that. I am also bringing Waiting for Eden because it has similar color hues that I think might match with the palace. And then lastly, I am bringing Defy the Fates by Claudia Gray. I think the colors might match with the palace. So I thought these would be good contenders. I'm gonna go catch my bus right now. See you later. don't vlog in public due to shame and embarrassment but I found a quiet nook around this castle it's kind of like this balcony slash pathway where you get to see basically the whole city view of Sintra and it just feels so peaceful sitting here that I wanted to give you a taste of what it's like out here <laughs> Just 
finished visiting Peña Palace and it was definitely worth the whole trip to Sintra because the palace was so grand and majestic. The buildings were so colorful and there was just a lot of hiking and walking involved. But for me as an able-bodied person, it was worth it. I'm gonna do a little bit of hiking in this area before I catch my bus and then I'll head back to Lisbon. Airbnb. It is 10 p.m., which is the earliest time I've arrived back to my Airbnb so far this week, which means that I am very excited to have a little bit of extra time to work on logistics. And I realize how fucking boring of a person I sound for saying that, but this shit really needs to get done and I've been putting it off all week. I'm really hoping I can finally get around to it. I wrote down a list of the things that I am hoping to get done tonight. First off, I need to order a hostel because I'll be in New York overnight before I take my final flight back home. That night is gonna be four days away from now, so I really need to book it soon. I also need to plan out some logistics for my trip tomorrow because I will be taking the train from Lisbon to Porto and spending half of the week in that city. Basically stuff like figuring out where to buy the museum pass for Porto and how the transportation system works in that city because they use like a different card. The cherry on top is I have been collecting all of the receipts that I've saved up from New York and from this past week in Lisbon that I need to take pictures of and then upload and organize them into folders because I'm gonna try to see if I can use them for tax deductions. Basically, I'm trying to work the system and sometimes working the system isn't like a sexy heist kind of situation. Sometimes it's just nerdy shit like collecting receipts and trying to get as much money as you can. I also need to shower and journal and also pack up my suitcase. So I have my night cut out for me. That's why I'm really glad that I came home early-ish. I want to give an update for the book that I read today, which is The Astonishing Color of After. Last time I read this, the other day, I was at 200 pages, and now I'm at page 327. I got to read the book while I was on the train to Sintra and then back to Lisbon. This book is very quick and easy to read because the writing is super simplistic. For the most part, I feel lukewarm about it. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up rating this book three stars. I know that is an important book. Mental health is something that is not often discussed in Asian cultures. I relate to a lot of what the mom is going through. There's one scene where she is very depressed and she she calls 911 and the main character doesn't know why she called 911 when she wasn't in seemingly any physical danger. And it reminded me so much of what I went through I think about five years ago when I was at the lowest part of my depression. And you get that feeling where life feels so unbearable that you don't even want to take care of yourself and I had seriously considered calling 911 and calling the hospital just so that I could just stay there and somebody else could take control of my life instead. Other than reading about the mother going to depression, I don't really care about anything else. I think that the main character is generic. I think that the narrative is kind of predictable and generic as well. The only unique thing that's really going on is this magical realism aspect of her mother turning into a bird. But even then, I wonder if it could have been done better 
there are so many scenes where she's going through these flashbacks of memories of other characters and those flashbacks are meant to kind of give full context about her family and what happened in the past but I feel like they happen so frequently and they basically happen whenever she lights incense it feels too on the nose for me like it's just a very easy way to get context for everything it could have been executed in a more creative way other than ooh I'm gonna burn incense and then I'll instantly get memories of other characters I also think this might just be a matter of me not being suited to read contemporary YA because I think that this book would be fitting for like a younger Asian girl but for me a jaded old cynic I'm past that point already. There is no hope left in my eyes to be saved by this book. And then for my life updates, I also finally learned how to use the timer on my phone when I take a picture. And let me tell you, that shit is a fucking game changer. Now that I've figured out how to take pictures with a timer, I'm basically fucking unstoppable. I am now completely on board with the idea of doing more solo trips because it's just so much easier. I don't have to worry about other people and if other people mess up, I don't have to try to salvage their shit. If I mess up, that's my own problem that I gotta worry about and that's fine. I don't have to stress out about anything else other than my own shit. And I get more time to take as many photos as I want, including photos of myself without feeling self-conscious about it. And I'm fine that I am still enjoying my trip even though I'm going solo, which is great. So I'm pretty much probably gonna be a hermit, a traveling hermit for the rest of my life now that I know I'm basically fine on my own. I actually wish that I had more time to visit Sintra and stay a little bit longer. I returned back to Lisbon and it was at this point that I realized I was finally comfortable traveling in this foreign place without worrying about getting lost. But of course, I'm gonna have to throw that all away and do it all over again when I visit a completely new city called Porto tomorrow. I'm actually pretty sure that I'll be able to maybe be close to finishing this book tomorrow when I take the train to Porto because I believe it's a three hour ride. Oh yeah, and speaking of books, I was able to get some nice pictures throughout Pena Palace for that. So I'm happy that that worked out. I'm excited to edit them and then upload them to Instagram because it'll be a subtle way of flexing that I've been around the world, but it's still focused on books. I guess that's basically what these vlogs are. I will see you tomorrow when we go to Porto. Also, I forgot to mention this. I had two different people within the span of five minutes come up to me and ask if I had any weed. At first, I was like wondering why people thought I was like a drug dealer for some reason. But then I realized the outfit that I'm wearing. And then it kind of started to make sense. Anyway, those are my updates. Goodbye. reason in the train ticket that I originally booked I was supposed to also buy the sea reservations locally at the station by the time I realized that and I tried to buy a ticket all the reservations were already filled up I don't really understand why I couldn't just have bought the sea reservations while I bought the tickets online I don't know why it had to be like a separate thing but fortunately I was able to get another ticket for the next upcoming train which is in about an hour the weird thing is they said that seat reservations are at an additional cost but when I rebooked my train ticket for like the next hour I didn't have to buy any additional cost for it so I'm just confused about like how this whole thing works but since I'm not paying any extra money I'm not gonna complain however my body is kind of freaking out right now because I have so many bug bites from yesterday when I was at Pena Palace and I'm also going through like major allergies so I've been going through tissue papers like crazy I'll hang in there though
too bad to get here, but I am starving. I am gonna go try to find dinner nearby, but before that, I wanna give you a quick tour of the Airbnb. The Airbnb is basically a studio apartment, so there's like a giant bed right in the middle over here, along with an open closet. There's a view of the river over here. I think the view is like the biggest highlight because this is a really nice location, but I actually quite like studio apartments. I just find them to be very functional and cozy. I'm a very simple gal. All I need is a bed and a desk and we're good to go. This is actually a really nice desk view. Like imagine just working over here and then you also get a view of like all this greenery. The bathroom and kitchen are tiny as you would expect from, oh, let me turn on the lights. As you would expect from a lot of European places. The kitchen is right next to the entrance. <laughs> and this is basically what it looks like, but I'm not planning on using the kitchen anyway, so I don't really care about that. Really, all I care about is the bed and bonus points for the desk space that has a really nice view. Now I'm gonna go grab some dinner. <laughs> from dinner and as you can tell from this camera angle I have a huge bug bite on my arm and I know I shouldn't scratch it but I can't help it. I ate some tapas for dinner and I splurged a little bit and got four different things including dessert because I figured that I haven't really been spending much money on food in general lately so I just wanted to treat myself out and even though I thought the food was okay it was really the service that was really really nice. The waitress knew that I didn't speak Portuguese so she took the time to explain every single thing on the menu and she was super friendly about it and I noticed the other waitress was doing the same thing for another customer. Even after I finished dessert my waitress came up to me and asked where I was from and she was sharing some cultural context about the differences between Lisbon and Porto and how they kind of have a rivalry with each other so she was very friendly and I'm glad that I went. I want to give some reading updates because I finished The Astonishing Color of After on the train. I would rate this book overall as three stars, but I also feel like every time I end up on a live show for Rachel Marie, it's gonna be this pattern where I'm the Debbie Downer that didn't like the book. I was that bitch when we talked about Cersei, and now I'm gonna be that bitch when we talk about The Astonishing Color of After. Here's the thing, I understand why we would praise it because of the diversity diversity of Asian American authors, the fact that this book touches upon mental health and depression, but I feel like those things are not enough for me to really enjoy a book. I felt very lukewarm about it overall. I think that this is the kind of story that would be amazing if it were an animated movie. Like if you had some amazing animation with it, the story would be phenomenal. It would probably win tons of awards, but the fact that this is a book that is very basically written by an author that has made it very obvious that is a debut novel, I think has lessened the impact of the story. To be very blunt, I don't think there's anything special about the writing. She does this thing where she constantly uses colors as a metaphor in order to reinforce to the reader how the main character is so passionate about art. But it feels very forced. A lot of times it feels very cheesy. Also, there's tons of parts where the main character's love interest is always asking her what color is it so that she would describe some kind of emotion or feeling or mood as a certain color and it feels super forced. Like imagine if your mother just died and you're at her funeral and then this dude comes up to you and he's like, hey, what color is it? I'm like, dude, shut the fuck up. This guy's walking around here acting like he's some character from a John Green novel. The metaphor for the bird was not 
that impactful. I feel like the whole metaphor of the bird was used as a hook for the story and for the plot, but it didn't really have any payoff. After I finished that book, I continued A Thousand Beginnings and Endings. I decided that I'm going to save Girls of Paper and Fire for when I take my plane ride back to New York. This is another book that is very likely that I'm going to be rating it three stars. I'm basically halfway through it already. It's a very common feeling that I have for any anthology. A lot of them don't really stand strong enough on its own. Just because you lump them all together in one book, it doesn't make it any special. I think short stories are just a miss for me in general. It's really hard for me to enjoy a short story because the fact that it's so short makes it really important for it to deliver a punch. And a lot of times, short stories aren't able to do that for me. A lot of these stories are a miss for me and a bit too simplistic for my taste. What doesn't help is that before I started Asian Readathon, I had just finished Her Body and Other Parties. That is a short story collection, which even though I didn't rate it five stars, I rated it four, I still thought that it was a very solid book in the sense where it really made you think about what each story represented. Whereas this book was just very on the nose. Like you would read it and you're like, okay, yeah, I understand what this is about. It's just too easy to comprehend for me. I don't know if this review is making any sense. I'm just making shit up as I go along. I just wish that the stories had more nuance. And surely since these stories are like based on mythology, there are more creative ways that you can approach it. That being said, there are some stories that I do like more than others. Those are usually the stories where they take some kind of mythology and they update it with some modern interpretation. To give an example, I marked this one story, which I think is gonna be my favorite so far. The story is called The Smile by Aisha Said. This is the kind of story where I feel like Renee Adier should have written for The Wrath and the Dawn. Like this is how that story should have ended up as. The story is basically based on a South Asian legend about a dancing girl who was a courtesan for the king and then the prince fell in love with her. So the prince and the dancing girl ended up having an affair and then the king found out about it and tried to exile her. But then there are some versions of the story where the prince saves her and puts her into hiding so that they can run away together. And it's kind of like the sweeping romance, but the way that this author reinterpreted the story and kind of retold a different version of it, I love that kind of messaging so much more. This author is trying to approach a very traditional way of how we view love and how we view relationships and makes us question, is this really love? Is this really what a relationship should be like? And I fuck with that, you know? So, you know, good job. Basically, Asian Readathon is going very average. However, I'm not really surprised by this. I've always found it difficult to relate to any Asian stories. And that's why I'm not surprised to see that I have a very lukewarm reaction to all of the Asian books that I've read so far. But I think my experiences as an Asian girl are a bit more different than other mainstream interpretations of what an Asian American experience is like. I would honestly be very surprised to find any story that is similar to <laughs> what I have been through. But that's okay. You know, I'm not even looking to try to relate to any any of these books. I'm really just here to be entertained. And the fact is, I'm just not entertained. That's it. I'm gonna call it a night. I probably won't read anymore because I got a decent chunk of reading done already throughout the day. Plus, I need to wake up a little bit earlier anyway because I have a long day ahead of me. This is gonna be my official first day in Porto. I have a bunch of stuff planned where I'm gonna visit two museums, three churches, and a garden because I evidently like to to fill out my day. And then tonight before I go to sleep, I still need to find a hostel for New York because I didn't get around to doing that yesterday. This is pretty much a pattern where I know I have to do something and then I end up putting it off and then I constantly think about how I have to do it every night. And then I end up barely getting anything done. I feel like I'm just scraping by day by day with all of these obligations. Anyway, you can probably tell, but my brain is 
slowly deteriorating <laughs> because I'm not being very interesting as I'm narrating all of this. Sorry for being boring during these vlog voiceovers. I am bad at vlogging. It's been hard for me to articulate my thoughts because I don't like to vlog in public due to shame and embarrassment. So I can only vlog at the end of the day. But every time is the end of the day, my brain is just mush because it's so tired and burnt out from everything. But if you made it this far, thanks for for sticking through anyway. Then I will bring you with me for my first official day in Porto. Goodbye.